I noticed that this little nagging pain in my breast and it felt like somebody was under my skin just pinching me. And it was just a constant nagging pain. So I stopped taking Tylenol and you know, pain would go away and it, it would just come right back. By that time, the, my breast had a little sinkhole in it. And I was trying to ignore it. I was trying to use push-up bras and trying to, you know, camouflage it, but the dimpling just wouldn't wouldn't go away. And I was getting out of the shower one day and my daughter hadn't left for school yet. And uh, she came into the restroom while I was in the restroom. She said, um, promise me you'll get that taken care of. When I went to the Rose, they gave me my first mammogram. And the fine needle aspiration, I'll never forget that. And uh, the biopsy, and I was just, you know, wondering, you know, how am I gonna pay for this? And uh, Jeannie said, you know, we'll, we'll sponsor you. I, the Rose, she said, the Rose will sponsor you? I said, for real? And that was a bright spot in my life because even though I was going through this, I'm adding in my head, it's like, I don't have no great insurance. I, at the time, I, I had me Medicare. And, uh, but Jeannie said, we'll take care of everything. The Rose will take care of everything that you need. You just concentrate on getting well, and that's what we want you to do. They set me up with a uh, patient navigator. She was a sweetheart. You know, she set me up with my first appointment at MD Anderson. Uh, I went into surgery, but they did a lumpectomy. And they took out the tumor and the surrounding tissue. And all my margins were clear. That was good. And uh, I did 19 rounds of chemo, 30 treatments of radiation. And they had a nickname for me at MD Anderson. And before you draw your blood before you get your chemo, they called me Smiley. And I would, every time I went for chemo, I would bake them oatmeal raisin cookies with pecans. And I would take them to them fresh that morning. And they looked forward to that. And I looked forward to seeing them. The heartbreak was my baby, Tracy. She was a freshman in college when I was diagnosed. And the hardest thing in the world for me to do at that time was was to tell my baby that I had breast cancer. And instead of her, you know, breaking down, she was like, but mommy, I can come home and I can take care of you. I said, you won't do, you will do no such thing. You're gonna stay there, you're gonna graduate, and when you graduate, I'm going to be there. And when she graduated from college in 2007, this gigantic stadium, and her friend that was behind her said, Tracy, she said, somebody's calling your name. She, she said, that's my mommy. She survived breast cancer. And she promised me that she would be here, and she's here. Having breast cancer, or having had breast cancer, it pushed me into my purpose. And I know that my purpose in life is to help someone else. And it gives me such joy to, to be able to help someone who's newly diagnosed. Because that's what I was left here to do. And if I can do something to help just one person, I've done, you know, what was assigned for me to do. And I now know that God gives the strongest challenges to the strongest people. And I know that I'm strong. I know that my voice is powerful and my journey is not in vain. Just to know that my journey, is, it wasn't in vain. That's my breast cancer story.